If you use filters in Excel too frequently and it becomes very difficult for you to update filter every time and then visualize the results, then I present a very simple solution for you which allow you to change the filters and immediately it gives you the results according to that. Hello friends, welcome once again. Let us see an example today. So here we are going to create a dynamic range filter in Excel. Earlier we have created examples for dynamic text filters or dynamic uh, number filters or dynamic date filters. This time we are creating a range filter which is dynamic. So why we are creating this? It is very simple that uh, when we have filters and we need to have uh, you know multiple criteria. For example, I want numbers between 1 and 10 or maybe 2 or 40. So uh, that is one filter. Now let's say I want to change the filter. So I again need to you know go to that filter drop down and then I need to go to that between range and then I need to enter the values from and to and then I need to click on OK. So there are multiple steps involved here, right? What I'm saying is that uh, you have two text boxes in front of you. You put on the values, it will automatically refresh the filters. You need not uh, go through various steps to apply the filters over and again. So if it is one time, you can use the default filters. But if it is kind of a repetitive thing, you want to analyze something, you want to make some variations. In that case, you can use these dynamic filters and this is very easy to program. So let us see how we can create such filters from scratch. So before we start writing the code, let us first understand what do we need to write. So our actions are purely based on text box write event, right? So as soon as we change the value of text box, we want some operation to get triggered. Right, so it will be doing, uh, or you would say it will be checking some values in text box one and text box two, and then it will be uh, removing the filters which are existing already, and then it will applying the filter again uh, based on the range that you specify, and it should automatically take care of the invalid values also. So these all things we need to apply in the terms of code, right? So uh, you can see that uh, when we change the value of text box one, the filters were refreshing if text box 2 is already there I mean the value of text box 2 is already there and similarly if 1 is there and you change the values of 2 again it should uh, you know update the list so that means we need to add two sub procedures one would be for text one, text box 1 change and second one would be for text box 2 change all right so let us move to VB editor and start writing first sub procedure which would be text box one change even so the first condition that we need to write here is that if any of the text boxes mm. is empty in that case I want to reset the filter right so by default the filters would be empty but the text boxes would be empty in that case it won't do anything but as soon as you write something and then clear some off it would be resetting the filter okay so let's see how we put this condition so I add if uh, conditional statement length of one uh, text box one dot value equals zero or length of text box two dot value equals zero in that case uh, I add this if block uh, completely first of all so it ends with uh, end if and uh, if you want to have a else block also you can put else there so to clear the filters I would be using heat one dot auto filter mode equals false this will clear all the filters of the data now what do we need to write if this uh, condition is not true that means if any of these are not blank that means both are having values so if both are having values in that case first we need to uh, you know put a condition that if uh, the filter already exists in that case clear it now why I'm saying this is let's say you have applied a filter of uh, range 1 to 5 right and then you change it so in both the cases both the text boxes were not empty right but uh, as soon as you uh, put the new values this change event would be triggered and first of all it need to clear that existing filter and then it need to apply the filter okay so that's why i'm saying that if sheet one dot auto filter mode equals true then clear them off okay so if filter is already there just wipe it off so to clear it off again we need to use the same statement that sheet one dot auto filter mode equals false all right so uh, the journey does not end here uh, this else block is uh, still incomplete uh, after clearing that filter what we need to do is we need to apply that filter with a new range once again 
so for that we first need to you know uh, get to know about our actual range so to get to know about the range we know that it starts from cell a2 but ending point we will be evaluating on the runtime so for that first of all let us calculate the last available row which is having data so i'm assuming that first column would always be having value so that's why i'm using sheet one dot cells rows dot uh, rows dot count comma one which is which means that uh, it would be going to the last cell of column a and then dot end excel up dot row that means it moves from last cell of column a towards upward direction and wherever it finds the last value it will return me that row okay so ideally it would be the last row of column a okay so uh, uh, that's how i would be getting the complete range uh, that a2 till d and that lr value okay so i'll be applying the filter on this range so now let's apply the filter so sheet 1 dot range and here uh, you can hard code a2 and then colon and then a d which is your column d and then m percent and then you need to put this last row which you have calculated so lr and then close the bracket and then dot auto filter all right so this is how you would be applying filter now uh, we need to give the parameters now first of all we need to tell that on which field i want to apply filter so field equals one so remember that in uh, uh, before this equal you need to put a colon here also so field colon equals one so uh, that means that the filter would be applied on column a which is column one all right now uh, what filters it would be applying so you need to mention the criteria so uh, first criteria is that uh, you need to use criteria one again colon and equal to and in string that means double quotes you can put the criteria that it should be greater than equal to all right and greater than equal to what so let us concatenate that value m percent and that value is actually coming from text box one so i am converting that text box value uh, uh, to integer so for that i am uh, using the function c int and then inside that i am passing the value uh, text box one dot value all right so i have actually applied the criteria that value should be greater than equal to whatever is there in in my text box one mm -hmm. all right so that is my first criteria but i need two criteria here all right so that's why i need an operator in between these two criteria and the operator is that and all right so i want that criteria one and criteria two should met okay so operator i have chosen as excel and and criteria two colon equals equals uh, less than equal to and again i need to put the value but it this time it would be the value of text box 2 so again i use the same function c int convert to integer and then text box 2 dot value all right so this is how the filter would be applied we missed one thing uh, that uh, as soon as uh, you uh, perform this filter uh, just make sure that uh, you activate that filter again otherwise you know it will look weird that user has entered the value and it uh, yeah, this uh, uh, text box actually loses the focus so therefore i am putting text box one dot activate now uh, this is pretty much but uh, there are some uh, gaps here let us first test it out and then we'll be filling up the gaps when i enter the values in text box one and text box two text box two doesn't matter right now but it should not be blank now if i uh, you know make changes into text box one values you see the filter is getting refreshed but as soon as i enter an invalid value this would give me error so to handle that error what i need to do is i need to use on error go to uh, i can use any label here so let's say i use the label error underscore clear now i need to define that label so i put that label here error underscore clear and uh, what exactly it need to do is whenever in the code it sees the error uh, in that case what it would do is it will first check if error dot number is not equals zero uh, and that means there is an error in that case it will be clearing that error first of all and it would give a graceful message that uh, it is not a valid value that you are entering all right so now let us see what uh, happens if i enter a number and then an invalid value so you see a message box instead of uh, you know uh, that error that you were getting earlier so that's how we can handle it gracefully 
now uh, let us uh, apply the same logic on uh, textbox 2 also because it is not working right now uh, the ranges are not getting filtered according to textbox 2 so that is very simple now we have done it for textbox 1 all you need to do is you just need to copy uh, this uh, piece of code and then paste it once again and then uh, modify uh, it from textbox1 underscore change to textbox2 underscore change and then minor tweaks so let us see what tweaks are required so i change the name uh, from textbox1 to textbox2 here it looks good because we have both the conditions so nothing need to be changed here and uh, after that here we are uh, uh, removing the filters if filter already exists so it is also okay last available row which is also okay Appl uh, applying the filters that is also okay uh, here uh, i can activate the text box too uh, yeah uh, so if i'm changing text box 2 it should activate again text box 2 only so that is the only difference otherwise uh, both are same right so it is now ready let us uh, experiment uh, you see it is working absolutely fine all right so if you have any kind of custom requirement feel free to write an email to me or you can drop a comment here and uh, do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not done already and hit the like button all right i'll see you in the next video goodbye